Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you. Welcome to this time of worship together. Uh, this is one of those Sundays when we can say uh, we are great in spirit, right? Even though we might not be great in numbers today. Uh, just grateful to have everybody here uh, enjoying this day. It's a beautiful day. Uh, if you were out this morning as I was, it was just uh, beautiful temperature-wise. And just it was a perfect day to go out for a walk on the dog with the dog. Well, not on the dog, but with the dog. Um, as we prepare for worship, as we gather our hearts together uh, for this time of, of worship and celebration, I certainly do want to just call your attention to a few things. One, you will notice, of course, that you have the you should have the birthday list for June, and so you'll have that ready to go for June. And also, that uh, next Sunday is a special one. Um, 
It's our Pentecost Sunday service, so we're going to be gathered together. Assuming weather is going to work with us, uh, we should be over in the farmer's market uh, under the uh, roof over there. So we will be somewhat protected um, if it's... Yeah, I won't have to wear a hat, right? But we are going to try to figure out how the fans work, I think. So I think that's, that's part of the plan, right? That's right. We're going to try to see if we can get the fans working this year. Um, but no, it's all good. So we'll come over there. We'll have worship. And also as part of that service will be communion. So that'll be a lovely addition as well. And let's see. What else? Well, that's about all I had for announcements. Of course, other announcements are in the bulletin uh, for your perusal. Anything else that we need to know? I, well, I do want to say thanks to everybody for your help yesterday. Um, yesterday was, was pretty big. We had a nice, um, I thought everything worked out pretty well uh, between the service and the reception. Uh, it was a nice gathering of love and fellowship and support for the Stanley family. Um, yes, life happens, doesn't it? And... Um, we will miss Joanne and her spunk. And I say, can I say spunk? Mm -hmm. she, <laughs> yeah, she certainly has spunk. Um, anyway, but we will cherish her and the ways that she blessed us. And then Chuck as well, as uh, that family has worked in this church for many years. Um, but we gather today, friends, in the Spirit of God and the presence of Christ to give thanks to God with all that we have. Join with me as we embrace this moment of worship. Let us worship God. Let us raise our hearts, our voices, our lives before the grace of God in this moment, friends, join with me in our call to worship in the bulletin. The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thick darkness are all around him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his adversaries on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness, and all the peoples behold his glory. All servants of images are put to shame, those who make their boast in worthless idols. All gods bow down before him. Zion hears and is glad. And the towns of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O God. For you, O Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. You who love the Lord hate evil. 
He guards the lives of his faithful. He rescues them from the hand of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Our first hymn, friends, The Lord's My Shepherd, I shall, I'll Not Want, is 801. Join with me in rising. <laughs> Let us continue in worship, friends, as we lift up to God those parts, those aspects, those conditions and situations in our lives that cause us concern and for which we tremble. Because we still continue to deal with sin every day of our lives, let us lift this up to God for God's help and God's grace. Join with me in our prayer of confession. Into this day you have poured your spirit, O God, your very life. But our lives struggle to shine because of worry and exhaustion. Into our gathering you have given us your fellowship. But our relationships struggle to grow beyond the safe and familiar circles we have guarded. Into this worship you have filled us with your grace. But our hearts struggle to put aside our idols, our prejudices, our expectations, our apathy, and our comfortableness. Forgive us for holding you to our standards. Help us to be more the children you would have us be. Hear our prayers for better. You, O oh God, are our, are our only hope, a 
and salvation. Restore us in our love for your love, our service in your service, and our faith in your faith. Make us your living witnesses to your faith in us as people in Christ Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Yes, friends, it is a good thing to gather together in honesty and openness. It is a good thing to lay before God our true selves. It's a good thing to recognize our need for God this day and to find God's help. Join with me in our assurance of pardon as we recognize that help in all of us. Christ Jesus, our Savior and Redeemer, has opened the way to life in freedom of his love. This is the grace of God. All who are in Christ are forgiven. Amen and hallelujah. And as we prepare to invest ourselves in the Word of God, let us pray. Most, most Holy One, hold us now. In this time when we have experienced difficulty and trouble, when the news is distressing and our lives are often overcome by distress, we know there is more, we know there is better, and you help us in the days of challenge. Help us to find that peace, that comfort, that reassurance. In the precious name of Christ we pray. Amen. We are going forth today, friends, and perhaps you've picked up a little on the theme that I was thinking and planning this service is something of the confidence, the uh, trust, the courage that we need to face uncertain days and times of challenge. But join with me now in Psalm 23, our first reading. Follow along, if you will, in your own Bibles. The Pew Bibles are simply in your hearing, but receive with open hearts the Word of God. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The word of the Lord, my friends.
That may be the only anthem. I would actually put money on this. I think that's the only anthem that in the choir room that actually has, that it comes from a movie. Specifically, it says on the cover of that anthem that it comes from Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? And um, I just think that's kind of funny. That makes me want to go watch it. Okay. Speaking of journeys, let's journey on over to the book of Acts, where we pick up again in Acts 16, and uh, we're going to pick up exactly where we left off last week, where Paul and Silas and Timothy and Luke were actually hanging out in Philippi. They'd met Lydia, they'd found a home there while they were working in Philippi, and while they're there, here we go. One day, as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune-telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, These men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaim to you the way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days. But Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, These men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and, and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he was supposed, since he had supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them, and he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. I don't know about you, but that's one of those stories that just, I don't know, it's almost haunting to me. It, it just really it kind of sticks in my head. All right, here you go, friends. You're sitting at a traffic light, waiting your turn, and an armored car goes by, okay? One of those bank cars carrying the, the money, right? The back doors fly open, and a giant box of money tumbles out. Then the box hits the ground, it blows open, and bills go everywhere, in a storm of green currency. All the while, the truck just rolls on its way, even without a backward glance. Before you know it, the truck is around the corner, never to be seen again. 
Hundreds of hundreds are raining down from the sky. I wonder what we might do. I wonder what the others might do. How many would jump out to begin collecting the money to return it to the currency transport service? How many would jump out to find a new retirement strategy? Actually, I think a good number of you, if not all of you, would do the right thing if that means collecting the piles of money to somehow return. But I'm not sure most people would. You all might be the exception. And yes, I'm saying you are exceptional. It's pretty straightforward and simple to expect people to act a certain way sometimes. We all probably have expectations for people sometimes. Now, here's the thing. Sometimes our expectations might be right, but there are certainly times when we are completely wrong. When that jailer in Acts 16 awoke to find the cells in his prison wide open, he assumed the worst. Because that is human nature. Honestly, this is harder than the money example that I gave earlier because if we ourselves had been publicly stripped, painfully beaten, and unjustly imprisoned, and then the doors open up wide when no one's looking, it would be really really hard to stay there, let alone convince anyone else to stay there too. <clears throat> After all, this was already a miscarriage of justice. You should not have been there to begin with. Why not just slip out? On the flip side, the jailer was personally responsible for those who were in the jail. He had one job. And he thought it was really a pretty simple and easy one. All he had to do was keep people locked up. It's not like he had a bunch of hairy Houdinis, you know, who were escaping every other day. It wasn't that kind of place. But if he did lose people, then it was his neck. On the line. That's why he prepares to end his own life when he saw the open doors. No one in their right mind would stay in the cells. He knew they were gone, and his life was forfeit. Better to go on his terms rather than someone else's. This is a hard story. And that's what made it more shocking when the prisoners were still there. People who were justly and unjustly incarcerated, and that blew his mind. Something that truly surprised me this week was another school shooting. But not just any school. Another massacre at an elementary school, Robb Elementary and Uvalde Texas, if you've not heard about this, you must be living under a rock. It's been all over. What might not be quite as often in the news reports, but I suspect you may know, is just how bad our school shooting situation in America is. According to Every Town Research, which is a gun regulation lobbying group, there have been over 87 school shootings every year in America since 2013. According to CNN, with slightly different parameters, they found that there were 288 school shootings in America between 2009 and 2018. The next highest nation in the world with school shooting figures on record is Mexico, which had eight. We've had at least 288 
and Mexico had at least eight. No one else is close. To see and hear something so bizarre is enough to get your attention. Whatever it is that we think we're doing in America, we're not doing it very well. Yes, something must be done that is not already being done. One day it will be your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. I have a cousin who lived through a school shooting in a college in Illinois a number of years ago. None of us saw this last one coming. When Paul and Silas began working in Philippi, I doubt they expected to end up brutally beaten and jailed without any charge that quickly. Remember Lydia? She provided them a home, a home base, and they began working for the gospel in that Roman pagan town. That story with the possessed girl is a bit weird. It's not really clear what Paul's motives are, but it's pretty safe to assume that they were not trying to get arrested and imprisoned. They were just doing their thing and going about their business with that girl's voice calling out to them again and again. Just so. When they decided to stay in prison with whomever else was there, their purpose was not to overcome the jailer with their faith. They weren't trying to manipulate him with this show of faith and trust and courage. They were really just doing the loving thing. What God would want them to do. Overcome evil with good. That brings me to the other experience that I had this week along with you as far as unexpected things, and that was the death of Joanne Stanley. What happened to her was not evil per se. The illness, her weakness, and the infection were all evidence of a hurting and broken world. She loved her surgeon and had worked with him for many years and respected his work. Who knows what really happened and why? What matters is that when she faced, when she was faced with something she had never expected, which she didn't see coming, when her family was faced with something that they, they never saw coming, when we were conf confronted with something that we never saw coming, there's a choice to make in that crisis. Retreat in fear, move forward in faith. The response for people in Christ Jesus is the same as it was for Paul and Silas. Remain in an attitude of love. We are not motivated by hate. We are not motivated by resentment. We are not motivated by anger. We are not motivated by blame. We are motivated completely by love. We even need to love that chief of police in Vivaldi who held the officers back for an hour before entering the school. We even need to love the shooter. We need to love that jailer, the Roman officials, the possessed girl, who all had a hand in an unfair practice in that world, the people who did it then and the people who do it now. What this marvelous story of Paul and Silas in this Philippian prison says to me is that when we are genuinely met with the ugliness of the world in the spirit of Jesus, that bigger things can happen than we expect or realize. Love grows in the face of the unexpected if we give love in the face of the unexpected. It's so natural and expected that we react with fear and hate and anger and blame. 
That is what the world expects. That's how the world operates. But that's not how the world is changed for good. As children of God, the same God who has established the kingdom, his kingdom in our midst with the spirit of our Lord, we need a world that is changing for good. The unexpected is coming, friends. It always is. The real surprise will be how love can bring something beautiful even out of something horrendous. People are working for good right now in Uvalde. People shared in good here yesterday. People are working for good in Ukraine. We all need more good. To God be the glory. Amen. As we search and seek and look for God's good in our lives, let us always cling to that confidence that enables us to do that. Expecting God's good, knowing God is good, is not something you can do without faith. Let us recognize that faith now as we share together the expression of faith that uh, is so near and dear to many of us, our most common confession, the Apostles' Creed, found on page 35 of the hymnal. Join with me in rising and sharing our faith together, friends. What do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Next hymn, friends, is 816, If Thou But Trust in God to Guide Thee. Let us embrace the gift of the Spirit through this song.
es decir, as we turn now to our time of shared prayer, <clears throat> I certainly encourage you and welcome your prayers for those who are on our prayer concern list, uh, the ones that we've been keeping in our hearts on an ongoing basis, uh, certainly special prayers for the Stanley family uh, through these last weeks have been very challenged. Also, special prayers, uh, ongoing prayers for Barbara Smith and for Carolyn Wells. Uh, special prayers for Margaret Carter in these days uh, as she faces her own struggles. Uh, also, I ask for your prayers for Vince Osborne. Um, that is Marilyn's nephew, right? Um, he uh, suffered an accident and uh, is uh, really did a number on himself. But um, hopefully he'll be fine and well and, and back home soon. Um, any others we need to keep in our hearts this day? Well, uh, we know that this certainly is a time when we think about remembering those who have given their lives in service to our nation, uh, to the American uh, virtues, and have certainly given to guard our lives, and um, so we remember them as well this day. Let us go to our Lord together in prayer, friends. O oh God of life and love, continue to speak to us in resurrection tones. Speak to us in the refrains that pierce the darkness with your holy light of truth. Your glory shook the pillars of earth and opened death's tomb so many centuries ago. The movement of your word in history through the prophets rolled that stone away. Your faithfulness brought women to an empty tomb out of respect and decency and love. Your love brought Jesus back to us all. Your love has given us the Christ. Speak to us, O oh God, in our songs of life. Sing to the hearts who are hurting in this hour. Sing to them of your healing, transforming, redeeming spirit. Sing to those who have become your hands and feet of healing. Sing to their hearts in your service. Comfort your people who are hurting and sick. Comfort your broken and lonely children. Comfort your caregivers and those who are entrusted to the care of others. Thank you for the evidences of your song in our times of darkness. Fill us in body, mind, and spirit with your expressed glory. and Show us your goodness in the lives of those whom are hurting. Speak to us with your hands of service. Work your ministry across your people as you build greater expressions of your living love. Give us the boldness and creativity to reach out in expressions of mission and goodness and welcome. Open our hands to embrace in hospitality. We are particularly mindful of the service of those who've given their lives for the sake of our freedom of those who have given and served our nation so that we might be free. May their lives continue to know honor in our collective memory. May we cherish the sacrifice of love and duty. Speak to us in your living word, in Jesus, the living one. Show us more and more of what it means to be one body, one community, one family, one people, one church, one kingdom, one priesthood, one spiritual house built upon our Lord. Show us Jesus in all that we do, in our common life, when we leave this time of worship. Don't ever let us forget your claim on our lives. Show us in the face of the other, the stranger, and even in our enemy. Show us Jesus and hold our gaze. Speak the truth of your service to those who are charged as our leaders. Speak your strength and compassion to those who protect us and work for our safe, safety and welfare and the public good. Speak your grace to the young and to the old. 
Speak your goodness to families. Open your mouths. Open our lives. Open our hands. Open our heart. Open our minds to being your witness, your living, constant witness to the Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray and who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, uh, as we also continue in worship through the dedication of our blessings to become a blessing for others, we present our gifts, the very best of ourselves and God's goodness in our lives. Uh, join with me in our prayer printed in the bulletin as we commit these things to the good of God. O oh God, our Lord and King, we have brought this reflection of your goodness in our lives. Receive our gifts in the spirit that they are given. Bless the lives of those around us and make us one in Christ in whom we pray. Amen. Our final hymn, friend, number 839, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Again, I invite you to join with me. Let us stand and worship God. I certainly hope that we can leave with that kind of assurance. 
God is with us, friends, in the expected and the unexpected, and where we need God the most, that's where God is calling us to work. Let us face every unexpected thing in this world with the same confidence, the same trust, the same courage, the same faith, the same love that enabled those through the years to step up and do the same, that enabled Paul and Silas to face that dark night of the soul. We are here because Jesus is with us. Let us go forth in the faith of our Lord together. May the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit abound in your lives today, friends, making you the very vessels of the gospel, the love of God through Jesus Christ. May this blessing overflow in your lives to those around you, to those whom you love, to those whom we are called to love, and may we be that blessing every day this week and the weeks to come. Amen and amen.